Hi guys, all right, so this is the introduction to the third and final programming assignment. And as I mentioned to you before, this one is optional. So uh, if you're still working on PA2 and that's all you can get done, that's fine. If you wanna finish PA3, that's great. I will average um, your grades basically based on whatever you submit. Um, but I think this assignment is pretty sweet. It wraps everything up we've been working on. So um, I hope you have the capacity to give it a try. All right. Um, <clears throat> so um, here's the assignment. Um, basically what we'll be doing is you will implement the socket class um, to communicate uh, the fire and result messages between the client and server over the network rather than writing them to a file and then having um, the other program uh, pick stuff up from a file. Um, then uh, that socket class is also going to be amenable to being extended to do Google mock testing. I'll show you guys how that works. Um, and then you'll have to implement this thing that basically forces um, the server to alternate which shot it processed. So it shouldn't be that a player, that player one, for example, can take two shots in a row. Basically, we do, we process shot for player from player one, and then we process a shot from player two, and then we go back to the shot from player one. So they have to, the processing of the shots has to alternate. And the way we're going to do it is using threads and semaphores, which is one of the last topics in uh, this course. All right, so let's look at the code. Um, we have uh, made changes to a few things. So we have the run client um, or the server main and client main programs. Let's start with those maybe. I'll close everything else up. Um, okay. So for the client, it's a little bit different. Um, the first thing I changed to make it easier to start two different clients, because ultimately you have to test with two different clients, is to take the player number from command line. So when you um, look at your uh, client and server, you can edit the configurations and basically take your client and then add program arguments, which will be uh, player one, and then you can copy this um, and so you can run client two, we'll name it that. This will be client two, and then this one will be client one. And now you can start two of them in parallel and they'll start with different uh, player numbers. Okay, so that's cool. Um, and then as before, you're gonna enter uh, X and Y positions to fire, okay? Now, the one thing we're changing here is that to communicate with the server, we're going to set up a, a socket here and you guys will implement this connection socket class, okay? And so when we uh, start the socket, it's going to connect to server address and server port. Server address is defined here. Server port is defined in common.hpp. Uh, um, so we're gonna first establish a connection to the server and then we're going to initialize the client with the socket or with the pointer to the socket. And then all the other things like fire will basically use that, that socket. Okay. Um, all right, so then let's move on to server. And the server is a little bit different. So we are starting with the main, which will set up uh, two semaphores and one is for player one, one is for player two. So we have an array of semaphores, okay? And one of them is um, set and the other one is not. Um, we'll, I'll kind of come back to that in lectures to explain how those works. But these will basically control whether or not or basically which server can process um, a shot. Okay, so which server? Well, let's start from the beginning. So we set up these semaphores, we open a server socket on a particular server port that's going to accept two connections, um, and then your clients will connect to it, okay? So then once the server is running, you can start one or two uh, players or clients, okay? And they're going to connect to this socket, okay? So 
once the socket accepts a connection, you get a, from the server socket, you get a connection socket, okay? And then you're gonna start a thread called run server and you're gonna pass the connection socket, okay? So this is, so starting a thread will start this function run server, which is defined here. And then we're gonna create a server and we're going to initialize it with the connection socket. So now basically we're running two server objects in parallel, okay? So each one for each client. Okay, and they both start with two boards. This is something I gotta fix in future assignments, but um, that doesn't matter for now. Either way, um, your server has access to, to the two different player boards, but we're gonna have two servers. One server will process requests from client one and the other will process requests from client two um, against the correct board. All right, so as long as we're not stopping the threads, uh, the server is basically going to check if a shot is available and then if a shot is available on a socket after the client fires, then this server is going to process the shot, um, taking into account the semaphores uh, to figure out if it should wait or if it can actually start processing uh, the shot. Now, the way this shot is processed is it, the server needs to know against which board to check the fire. And so the fire message isn't going to just include X and Y, but it will also include player ID. Okay, so actually we'll have three elements, player, X, and Y, and then depending on the player number, the server will say, okay, the shot is from player one, I need to check it against player two's board, and vice versa. Okay, so we start the program, set up the semaphores, set up a server socket, as clients start, they connect, we get a connection, we start, two different threads to run two different servers, okay? And then you can press enter uh, to basically have this program move on, pass this C in. And then once you, once you press enter, we will set stop threads to true. This will break this loop and now everything will start exiting and tearing stuff down. Okay, so that's pretty simple here. Then we have server.cpp. Um, this is as before, you guys can um, kind of copy your code over and make the necessary modifications. Two things to remember is that process shot doesn't take player number, it takes the semaphores. And based on the set of the semaphores, either this server gets to move on or the other server gets to move on. Okay, so they, they need to switch back and forth between the two. This is probably one of the hard parts about this assignment. Okay. Um, all right. Um, then we have client. Okay. Um, pretty much same stuff as before. You can copy your code here. And then the only difference here is we're getting connection socket to initialize a client. Just like in server, uh, we're getting a connection socket whenever we initialize a server. All right, so now what is this connection socket and, um, and server socket? So basically in here, uh, this is socket.hpp. You guys need to define a, um, or I'm defining a socket class for you. Okay, so you have your socket exception for throwing errors. Um, and then you can create a socket. Oh, actually, let's start with a server socket. So you have two classes. You have connection socket and you have server socket. Okay. Each one of those actually has an internal socket file descriptor, which is the stuff we talked about. This is the actual TCP socket. Okay. Initially, it's initialized to zero because it doesn't actually have a file descriptor yet. Okay. So in the construction of server socket, you guys need to set up a server socket that ends up listening to connections. Okay. So it creates a server socket and puts it into a listening state. Once the socket is in a listening state, it can accept connections. And when it accepts a connection, it creates and returns a connection socket. The connection socket is defined here. You can construct it in two ways. You can either construct it by giving it a socket, uh, a TCP socket. Okay, this would be done here based on your return of accept. Um, when the TCP socket actually accepts connection inside the server socket that accept. 
um, or you can construct it on the client by connecting to a server socket using IP and port and this is what happens in here okay mm, so then we have destructor we have a send method which will call a send on the actual socket we have a receive method which will actually receive data from the socket and return it as a um, um, input string stream. Okay, I'll come back to why this is important in a second. Okay, you also have this data available function and luckily for you, I'm actually providing you with that function because it is not exactly easy to figure out what's going on in here. Um, so I wrote a lot of comments, you can read through it. Um, but basically what happens is that you have a TCP socket and we are checking whether or not that socket actually has any data. So before a client fires, this will keep returning false. After a client fires, this will return true. And now you can use receive to read data from the actual TCP socket. Okay, so I wrote this function for you. You don't have to noodle this out. All right. Um, so basically your job is to implement all the functions. I left my comments in. I think this is gonna maybe make it a little bit easier for you on how to um, build these functions out. So I promised I'm gonna come back to this input string stream. So what happens is we're going to uh, receive data from a socket. The data you receive is going to go into this buffer, but then the data that arrives will either be a a fire message, which is in JSON, or a, a result message, which is also in JSON. And when you receive those messages, you need to first deserialize JSON to know what are the coordinates or what is the result of, of the, whether it's a hit or miss uh, when you're getting a result message. Now, to deserialize JSON, we've been using the serial library and you are creating archives or read, read archives based on a file and an output stream from a file. Now, we don't have files here, everything goes over the sockets, so we need to convert the data that's coming in to this buffer into a string stream, and then you can pass that string stream into your uh, serial to, instead of a file uh, stream, to deserialize the data. All right. So I think that's about covers it up. I'm trying to think what else. Aha, tests, right. So right. So we've created the socket function and then to test the stuff, I need to set up a mock class. So I wrote that for you guys. This is based on the TDD lecture if you guys wanna go back to that. And basically we need to check um, if the relevant functions in server and client.cpp call the send data receive data available and receive methods okay but to test it we can't actually test it with live sockets so we need to test it with live methods and basically force these methods to return certain values as if data were coming in from sockets so then when we look at test.cpp i rewrote these quite heavily to take advantage of the mock stuff okay so the bit array tests are unchanged so if you are trying to get back some points for pa2 these are basically this is basically the same stuff nothing has changed here okay now for server initialize or basically anything that has to do with server or client we have we need to use mocks so we're going to create a um a socket Okay, and that socket will be a new MAC connection socket, okay, which is basically our connection socket with just a dummy file descriptor because the MAC doesn't actually have to transmit anything over TCP IP, so we can just get away with this MAC number. Okay, and so we pass this socket into our initialize and we can test the initialize function. Now, when it comes to evaluate chat, um, this is pretty similar, except we do this extra setup like, in, like before. Where it starts getting interesting is here. So in process shot, we set up the socket, we set up our semaphores, um, and then when we actually 
evaluate shot or evaluate process shot, we end up calling this function here, okay? And as part of what we're saying is that inside this function, two functions need to be called. One is receive and the other one is sent. That makes sense. So when we process shot, first we receive the fire message and second, we send out a result message, which is here. So we're going to invoke the receive and send functions of the socket that's passed into the server. Okay, so what I'm writing here in this test is that when we receive, once this function will be called and it will return shot. And shot we define here. So this is the fire message that's coming from, the, from a client, which now includes player as well as the coordinates. Okay, so I'm saying don't pull the receive data from a socket, use the mock method, and the mock method will basically return the string as if it came from the socket. And now when we send the reply, we're not sending it to on the actual TCP socket. We're going to call the send method, the mock send method with the result, and the result is defined here. Okay, so basically inside your process shot, you need to make calls to receive and send. And if the receive gives you this, you should put this inside as a parameter to send. Okay. Um, same thing for, for miss, for out of bounds, all that other stuff. Okay. And so you have all these other tests, including for client, initialize client fire. Um, right. The fire message will basically have to be this, meaning that you're sending this fire message into shot. Okay. When you're calling um, this fire function with these parameters. All right, so that's about it. It's a little mm, maybe complicated because we're using so many different tools in here. We're using sockets, we're using semaphores, we're using threads, we're using mock. Um, like I said, it took a quite a bit of time to, to write this stuff, uh, mostly because I needed to design it in a way that it would work. Um, but what's left for you guys is really to just write the, the socket class and socket.cpp. Um, that's really the bulk of it. Once this starts, once you have this working and I gave you guys some examples how to write this stuff, um, that's basically half the work. The other half the work is to modify your client and server stuff such that you're doing the correct, you're receiving data from the socket and writing it into socket in process shots um, on the server side and on the client side, you're using sockets in uh, fire and you using sockets in uh, get results. All right. So that's about it. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I certainly did coming up with it. And um, yeah, let me know if anything work, if anything doesn't work. Um, let me know if you're running into problems. Let me know if you um, have any suggestions for future changes to this assignments and um, yeah, good luck.